for watching and today I would like to do a nice little exercise with direct sums. And by the way, if you're my student and you're watching, I would give you those definitions on the exam. So it's really just a problem that's important. So what is the definition of a direct sum? So definition, we say V is a direct sum of two subspaces, let's say W and Z, if the following two things hold. First of all, V is a sum of W plus Z. And what that means is, if you take a random element in V, you can write this as the sum of two elements, one being in W and the other one, let's call it Z prime, being in Z. And moreover, those two subspaces, they need to have a zero intersection. So, so think disjoint, but because there are subspaces, they need to have the zero vector. And let me give you a quick example. And by the way, at the end, I will give you, if you want, a more general definition. So just let uh, V be R2, and then W be the x-axis, and Z be the y-axis. And indeed, you can check that R2 is the direct sum of W and Z. Why? Because any element in R2 can be written as a sum of an element in the x-axis, the x-coordinate, and an element in the y-axis, the y-coordinate, and moreover, the intersection of those two axes is the zero intersection. All right, but this is not why we're here today. Today I want to show something really cool. Namely, if you start with a basis of W and a basis of Z, usually if you add two bases together, you will get gibberish. But it turns out if you have direct sums, you will actually get a nice basis. So, here's this nice exercise. So again, suppose we're finite dimensional. So suppose W and Z are finite dimensional vector spaces, so F, D, V, S, and let's say beta, which is, I guess, W1 up to WM, and gamma, gamma, which is, if you want, Z1 up to ZK. This is a basis for V. Sorry, <laughs> obviously, uh, let V be uh, uh, the direct sum. So suppose you have two finite dimensional vector spaces, and V is the direct sum of the two, and you have a basis of W and a basis of Z. And by the way, those are disjoint because otherwise we would have a common element in W and Z. And what we want to do is show that the union, so beta union gamma, which is W1 up to WM, Z1 up to ZK, is a basis for me. Of the direct sum. For example, if you start with a basis with the x-axis, which is 1, 0, and a basis for the y-axis, which is 0, 1, if you put them together to get 1, 0, 0, 1, that is a basis for R2. And it's not a coincidence, it's based on, it's based on this fact. All right, let's show that. What's the definition of a basis? It's a linearly independent set that spans V. So let's first of all show that it's linearly independent. So suppose, I don't know, A1, W1, plus dot, 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 plus AM, WM, plus B1, Z1, plus dot, 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 plus BK, ZK, equals to the zero vector. And what we would like to show is that all those constants are zero. Now, Remember what the definition of uh, direct sum is? It means V is a sum 
of the two, and also W intersect Z is trivial. Now, this one won't really help because we already have a sum, we wrote it this way, so maybe this one helps. Because notice, let's just separate out the W's and the Z's. Then we get A1 W1 plus dot 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 plus AM WM equals to minus B1 Z1 dot 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 minus BK ZK. Now notice, this one, well, it's a linear combo of elements in Z. And Z is a subspace, so any linear combo of vectors in Z, it's still in Z. So this is in Z. But the same element, right, minus B1, Z1, minus ZK, Z, ZK equals to A1, W1 up to AM, WM. So the same vector is also in W. What is that telling us? Minus B1, Z1 up to minus B, K, Z, K, it's in Z and it's in W. So it's in both of them, but whew, we know that the intersection is zero. So the only way it can be in both of them is if it's a, the zero vector. So let me, let me write that down. So minus B1, Z1, dot, 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 minus B, K, Z, K, is in Z, but also in W. So it's in Z intersect W, but this is the zero set. So the only way this works is if it's the zero vector. So minus B1, Z1, dot, 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 minus B, K, Z, K, the zero vector. But remember, the Z, I, Z form a basis so they're linearly independent, so all those coefficients are zero. But, again, Z1 up to Zk, linearly independent, so we get basically B1 equals zero, dot, 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 Bk equals zero. Then what does that mean? It means this whole expression it's just a zero vector. So combining this fact with this fact, we get that the linear combo of the Wj's is zero. So A1 W1 dot 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 plus AM WM is zero. But now remember, this set W1 up to WM is linearly independent. W1 up to, I think I call it WM, is linearly independent. So all the AIs are zero. A1 is zero, dot, 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 AM is zero. And then, at least for this part, we are done because we assumed there's a linear combo that gives you the zero vector, and we showed all the coefficients are zero. Both the AIs are zero and the BKs are zero, and therefore the whole set is linearly independent. And that's all she wrote. So basically, uh, W1 up to WM, Z1 up to ZK is linearly independent. All right? Fortunately, that was the hard part. The easy part is the spanning part. So uh, let x be in v be arbitrary. Now we know that v is the sum of w and z because of direct sum. What does that mean? x equals to y plus, let's say, z, where y is in w, z is in z. But look. Uh, we know that those ones, they span W, so Y is a linear combo of vectors in W. So W1 up to WM spans W. So in particular, Y is some linear combo. 
as AMWM for some AI. And moreover, same thing with Z, so Z1 up to ZK spans Z. So the vector little z is a linear combo of those zk's. Z, so a k b k z k for some let's say b j and therefore if you take the sum y plus z Then, well, x, which is y plus z, which is, again, a1, w1, plus da, 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 plus a, m, w, m, plus b1, z1, plus da, 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 plus b, k, z, k. And that's precisely in the span of our union. z1, da, 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 z, k. And that's all we wanted to show. We wanted to show that if you take an arbitrary vector in V, it's in the span of those two ve those vectors. So the span of your mm, the set z1 up to zk is all of V. And therefore, what do we get? This set is linearly independent and spans V, and therefore we have a basis for V. So this is cool. In particular, what is that showing? It says that the dimension of V equals to M plus K, which is the dimension of uh, W plus the dimension of Z. In general, this is not true. If V is a sum of two subspaces, this identity isn't true, but it is true if you have a direct sum. Last but not least, um, what about more than two? So it turns out for more than two uh, spaces, the definition is slightly more complicated. And let me give you sort of an example. Because you might think, well, what's the direct sum of, let's say, W1, W2, W3? Well, one definition is, of course, so every V can be written as the sum of those three spaces. And moreover, you might guess, oh, all that we need is that each intersection is the zero space. But that's not quite true. And let me give you a, co a counterexample. Suppose you have W1 being the x-axis, W2 being the y-axis, and let's say W3 being the line y equals x in R2. Then, look, it is true that if you take uh, V to be R2, then R2 is the sum of those three things because any vector can be written as a sum of one vector here plus one vector here plus one vector there uh, trivially just by letting this to be zero and moreover if you intersect each space individually then you get the zero intersection so W1 intersect W2 is a zero vector, W1 intersect W3 is a zero vector, W2 intersect W3 is a zero vector. But it turns out R2 is not the direct sum of W1 intersect W2 intersect W3. Direct sum is slightly more like it's slightly more specific than that. And Essentially, there are two definitions, one that's a bit more complicated, that says that if you take the sum of W1 and W2, it should be, uh, have a, just a trivial intersection with W3, and, which is not true here because W1 plus W2 is R2, and it has not a trivial intersection with W3, 
and you know similarly like w1 should have a trivial intersection with w2 plus w3 etc etc it's slightly not slightly it's a pretty complicated definition there is a slightly easier definition namely v is that's it for, just for sake of ease um, let's say v is the sum of three subspaces if couple of things first of all v is the sum of those two things which means for every vector in v you can write this as x plus y plus z where x is in w1 x is in y is in w2 and z is in w3 and moreover almost like linear independence but more general the only way to write a vector as a sum of those three elements that gives you the zero vector is if you start with the zero vector to begin with so in other words if x plus y plus z is the zero vector where x is in w1 y is in w2 z is in w3 this implies that it's only the trivial uh, If you write the zero vector as you know the sum of three vectors one is in your first space the other one in your second space the other one in your third space it means those three vectors were the zero vector to begin with so here for example this doesn't work because for example I think one zero plus zero one plus let's say minus one minus one gives you the zero vector but uh, none of those are actually the zero vector, so that's a problem. So this is not a direct sum, but here it is a direct sum, and for example, think in R3, the x-axis, the y-axis, and the z-axis. That would be an example of a direct sum of three things. Uh, all right, I hope you like this little exercise and this discussion of direct sums. If you want to see more math, please make sure to subscribe to my channel. Thank you very much.